What if I told you that you could recycle and luminate at the same time? Well now you can by luminating a cat toy around a toilet paper roll. Today's video is how to luminate a cat toy for beginners. Let's get right into it. supplies, you will need a 12 peg round loom and looming hook and some yarn. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver, which is a number four medium weight yarn. Then you're going to need something I never thought I would say for supplies. A toilet paper roll or even a paper towel roll. Finally, you need some extra tools like scissors, a yarn needle, and notebook. If you want to go all out, I would suggest using a bell because it kind of gets your cat's attention. For your cast on, make a slip knot or knot and secure it to your anchor peg. Then weave your yarn in and out between all the pegs in a zigzag fashion. When you get to the beginning of the loom again, lay the working yarn over the tops of all the pegs and lift the bottom loops over the top strand with your hook. Every other peg will have two loops and every other peg will only have one, but that's completely normal for this cast on. When you finish, you'll notice the very first peg of the loom has no loop. That's also normal. Just ignore it and lay your yarn over it and skip to the second peg. Brace it back behind the peg to make a U shape. Then lift the bottom loop over the top. Okay, now I'm doing a weird stitch pattern called the moss stitch. Don't worry, it's super easy once you get going since the combination is very repetitive. You will need a notebook or a way to track your rows Go ahead and purl the next two pegs. Purling is when you go down to the stitch with your hook and pop the current loop off the peg. Then you replace it with the new loop you made and tighten. Do the same for the next peg to the right. Now you wrap knit the next two pegs and purl the next two pegs. We're working the pegs in pairs by you wrapping two and purling two. If it helps you, stitch markers will come in handy, but you'll have to remember to reverse them when the time comes. When you reach the end of your first row, go ahead and you wrap the first two pegs for the next row and proceed with two purls again. Continue all the way around the loom in the same exact pattern we did for the first row. This is where you need to start keeping track though. So what I did is I had a notebook and I actually put two tally marks for each set. So each set basically means you're going to do two rows by starting with two U-wrap stitches and then two purl stitches, two U-wrap stitches, and so on. So you're doing two rows by starting with the U-wrap stitch and two rows by starting with the purl stitch and everything else comes after that the same. That's why you have to remember to reverse your markers because that's where you need to make sure you do that. So I just put two tally marks and put a P under each set of tally marks or a K for knit for my other set of tally marks and I just kept doing that for, for each row I did by marking it so that way I could remember exactly which stitch I needed to pick up with for the next row. You will do this until you have the entire length of your tube. This depends entirely on if you're using a paper towel tube, which is much longer, or if you're just using a toilet paper tube. Some people may not even use a tube at all and that's completely fine, but I feel like it keeps the shape a lot better and if you wanna put any treats and stuff in there for your cat, you might have to use like something as a mold for your project. I just kept inserting inserting the tube inside to see how long it would get and since I already practiced this before I actually had a set amount of rows that I did before I needed to stop. So continue on until you have your desired length and then it will be time to cast off the loom. I have my length for the toilet paper roll finished so now it's time to bind off the project. Start by wrapping your yarn around a loom one time and snip it with your scissors. Then pretend you're purling by going down into the first pegs loop and grabbing the working yarn up. Repeat the same thing for the other pegs until the whole loom has been done. Pop off all the loops when you complete the last peg. So now your project is finished and we're going to start by going to the original cast on point and closing that hole completely up. And I'm taking my yarn needle right now and threading it and then I'm going to make just a very discreet knot in the fabric so that the hole doesn't open up again, especially if you think about storing treats or catnip or anything in there, you don't really exactly want the hole open. And then I'm actually going to thread the bell on as well and this was a little tricky so in the end I ended up using my fingers and then I tied a 
double knot around it. And finally, it's time to take your paper towel roll or your toilet paper roll and stick it into the fabric. And I just kind of wiggled it back and forth and helped the stitches slide on there without them ripping or anything like that. And then when you have it in there successfully, you can do this one extra optional thing that I would highly encourage you to do to make this toy even more fun for your cat. I actually put some catnip inside of it. You might be wondering if the catnip can still slip through the stitches and the answer to that question is yes, it still can, but I found out that most of the catnip actually clung to the inside of the stitches and only a little bit filtered through the rest of the project. So otherwise, to encourage more play, your cat will definitely love this and you can see Ozzy trying to also get to the catnip as well. Obviously catnip is very attractive to cats and he knew exactly when I got that. And then I would close the top of the project and take my yarn needle and make another knot. You can attach a bell to the other end if you want to too, but I only had one bell so I just decided to use one bell at the bottom. And then you will be completely done with your loom knitted cat toy. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Raya Light Knits. And Ozzy absolutely loved the toy and I know your cat will too. If you don't own a cat you can still improvise with the toy and make it for friends or family members cat. It's just a lot of fun and it's a really quick and easy project. See you next week for another video and until then keep knitting. Bye!